Hi and welcome to my video on Apple's main stage and in this video I'm going to show you how to leverage some of the advanced MIDI processing capabilities of Logic but for main stage. So we're going to do some things in Logic but uh, apply them to main stage. And there's a, a couple of things that um, that we'll look at specifically uh, such as the chord memorizer uh, function that exists within Logic, but it doesn't exist within Main Stage. So, um, but given that, there is still a way to make it happen. I'm going to show you how to do that. So, the method that we're going to use is to use Apple's uh, IAC driver, and I've already uh, outlined how to create that in a different video, and I'll put that link here in this video so you can look at that. But it's very important that you watch that video and you set up the IAC driver before starting this. What we're going to do is um, just create a couple of um, of test projects. So I'm in main stage here, and I'm just going to choose this pretty basic template right here. And uh, no hardware controls assigned. That's right. Now the first thing I'm going to do is a few steps just to uh, set up some environmental items. So let me go into layout mode, and in the controller here, I'm going to assign this to my Logic Main Stage IAC driver, uh, and you can call that whatever you want when you set it up, but uh, in my case it's Logic Main Stage. Now you don't necessarily have to do that, but I'm just taking control of, uh, of the environment here just to make sure that everything that I want gets routed the way that, uh, that I believe it should. Okay, so we're now going to flip over to Logic and this is a blank project and I'm just going to create a new track. It's going to be an external MIDI track and let me create that and in my device list here you can see FCB 1010 GM device and then the next thing is the IEC driver logic to main state. So I'm going to select that and let me choose channel 1. So now track 1 is assigned to the IEC driver. Okay, so again we're going to do just some um, just some environmental things and the next thing I'm going to do is go into Logic's environment and then I'll choose click and ports and I want to make sure that the MIDI controller that I'm dealing with is my Keyrig 49. Now you can substitute this for any controller that you have um, so just uh, plug in whatever, whatever your controller is to there. Now I don't want any summing going on so I'm going to delete that connection within the sum and then take my Keyrig 49 connection and I'm going to wire that to my input. Okay, so that means that my Keyrig is wired right to my uh, input notes right here. So for all intents and purposes right now, anything that I play on that controller will be routed into, or will come into Logic just as normal and then routed through this IAC driver into main stage. So let's just double check that just to see mm -hmm. if we're getting any, any sound at all. So you can see my monitor uh, object here that, um, that uh, at least it's connected and let's flip over to main stage and you can see the key being depressed right there. Let's just flip over to Logic and I'll let you see the mixer so you can see none of the none of the output is coming from logic that's just pure MIDI data that's going through this bus right into main stage so so the next step is we want to take a look at the um, uh, the chord memorizer is one of the functions that we want to uh, do for main stage but again do it within logic so the first thing I will do is go into my click and ports view right here and I'm going to insert the chord memorizer object within this window. Now I think the first thing I'll do is um, is a look at creating just a little bit of space so let me just drag this guy down uh, to create a little space here and then I'm going to insert a new object so I'll click on the new and then draw down here to the chord memorizer and by default I put it up there but you know what I want to see what the chord memorizer is doing um, so I don't want it to go after this monitor object here I want it to go before so I'll just drag that down uh, to this point and again I think I'll just clean this up a little bit Oops, let me just bring that back and I'll route my the output of my input into the chord memorizer object and then take the output of that into my monitor. Okay, so 
now anything passing through there is going into the chord memorizer so let's just double click on that to activate it and for those of you who aren't already familiar with this feature um, the top keyboard is going to be the uh, trigger key that you use so in this case let's just choose C2 and then the lower keyboard will be the chord that you want to generate from depressing that single key so let's just uh, we can choose really anything here let's just make it sound pretty different and um, it's pretty much anything we can add to this whatever you like and uh, let's go um, let's go up here as well why not okay so now if I depress my C2 key then it should generate that chord okay and if you look in my monitor window right here it generates C3, F3, E4, A4, A5 so now if we flip over to main stage and take a look and I'm pressing my C2 key you can see that it's generating that chord that I created within Logic okay so there's all kinds of things that you can do and those of you who are already familiar with the environment within Logic probably already know that uh, but just to take it another step further uh, why don't we add in another object uh, let's take a look here we can add in the arpeggiator and it did the same thing uh, it put that right before the monitor object so let's uh, let's bring that down and um, let's route this again back into I keep doing that it's driving me crazy alright so let's bring this uh, arpeggiator object down and we'll route the output of the chord memorizer into the input of the arpeggiator now you could run these in um, in series or parallel I'll just run it in series just for the time being just so you can hear exactly what it is that, it, that it's doing now so when I press the C2 key now it'll go through my chord memorizer which again just to refresh your memory is mapped to uh, those notes and uh, then from there it'll go into the arpeggiator and it should take that chord and then arpeggiate the notes within that chord now the important thing to remember when you're doing this is that the arpeggiator is a, a time oriented object so it needs tempo information from logic so what that means is you're going to have to play um, play logic in order for it to recognize what's going on the the chord memorizer isn't time dependent so you don't need to run the track within there but you do for the time dependent objects now you just run it in a loop there it's, it's really no no biggie but um, but to do that I'm gonna press play on logic which I'm doing right now and then if I press my C2 key and as you can see it's going through chord memorizer into the arpeggiator and let's flip over to main stage okay and all this is going on just by me pressing the single C2 key within Logic let's flip back there and uh, you probably already know but there's lots of things you can do with the arpeggiator and um, let's just do uh, a few of them here show you the directional as you heard that it was tonally ascending so let's just randomize it and um, we can uh, we can change the we can change the resolution if we like we can change the length uh, whatever we want flip back to main stage and over to logic so again the single C2 note is being pressed uh, going through the chord memorizer arpeggiator and into the sequencer and then that is being routed from logic through the IEC uh, bus right into main stage all right hopefully that helps and it shows you how you can use some of these uh, some of these neat feature features within logic and uh, and route them out to main stage. Any questions or comments? I'm always happy to hear from everyone. And thanks for watching.